John, um, it's a pleasure to have a chance to just ask you one or two, two questions about your time in China. Um, when did you first go to China? Well, I went, uh, it must have been uh, I, about uh, 1940, I suppose. And uh, the, the, the only way of dating it was that the, the Burma Road, uh, which, uh, with which I was associated, had been uh, broken by the Japanese at that time. Why, this is during the Second World War, why were you going to China rather than fighting on the Western Front or whatever it was? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Um, I, I, I was a conscientious objector and I joined the Quaker Friends Ambulance Unit, uh, which was an exciting unit to be involved in because it, it, it went all over the world and it had a, a special unit on the road in, in China. And was there any reason why you went to China? I mean, the Quakers were elsewhere. Did you know any yes. Chinese or anything? <laughs> no. I think really the reason was that I, it, I was always been interested in China, like many other mm. Westerners, and it seemed a wonderful chance to get somewhere that wasn't directly involved in our war. Mm. I think that was the main reason. The Chinese war wasn't a thing that was discussed very much in in my country. Why had you been interested in China before the war? I mean, not everyone was, and you clearly were. Can you remember what it was about it? Was it its history or culture, or had you read any Chinese novels or anything like this? I don't really think I can answer that properly. I don't think uh, there was any special reason, but uh, I, I, I did collect quite a lot of books about China and Tibet. Hmm. Which, which I used to read and uh, think about, and I used to you know, learn by heart the staging posts on the route to Lhasa, for instance. Really? <laughs> which was sort of, Strange know, thing to learn by heart. It was a strange thing to do, I didn't really learn it by heart, hmm. but I investigated it. Hmm. Had you been to any other parts of the world before going to China? I mean, other than... Uh, perhaps France. And no, 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 not, 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 not at all. No, mm. I've been to France. I think that's all. And what was your uh, sort of career or uh, activity before going to China? Were you already in a job, or were you you were teaching? Oh yes, you? yes, I'd already been teaching for four or five years, mm. teaching mathematics in a school in England. Mm. What was the school? It was uh, Clay, Clay Small School. Yes. That's right, I remember. Um, and they said, would you like to go to China, or did they just say, you are going to China? Well, I, the, uh, the, the unit, the ambulance unit, um, had, um, was, uh, sorry, the, uh, the people in the unit knew what the various other groups did, mm. and it was fairly well known that there was a China group a rather select and difficult one to get mm. into, mm. so which made me all the more keen to do it. Mm. So did you have to take an exam or any uh, tests to, to get in, or do you just go for an interview or what? Well, to get into the ambulance unit? Yes. No, well that was a question of, of, of uh, connections with, with Quakers. Mm. But for the China assignment? Oh, the China assignment? No, I don't think so. I mean, I, 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 uh, when it was decided I was going to China, then there was a great deal of, of, of training to be done, mm. and I'm beginning to learn the language and things mm. like that. Yes. So how much preparation time did you have? Oh, about six months. Mm. So you learned enough to just talk a little? Well, I, I, I went on learning it. Uh, I certainly learned it in, in, in uh, language schools in London mm. beforehand, and uh, I practiced on the boat on the way there, but like any other language studies, it, it didn't really start properly until I got there. Mm. And you were learning spoken and uh, written, or just spoken? Well, I was learning spoken, but I was quite keen on learning the written as well. Mm. And, and I used to say that it was just so that I could uh, have the nice, the right Chinese food that I like. <laughs> So I could write. I could write the names of Chinese foods. Mm. You did you like Chinese food before you went there? 
Oh, yes, yes. You did? Yes. Oh, I didn't know there was much Chinese food available in England before the war. Uh, no, there wasn't very much at all. The, in Cambridge, where I was mm. for some years, the, there, was, there was one Chinese restaurant in Cambridge. Was there? Before yes. the war? Yes, yes. Gosh, where was it? Uh, no, mm. I can't remember exactly. It was somewhere near the Round Church, as far as I remember. Hmm. That's interesting. So, you arrived by boat, and then you flew from Burma, did you? Or? Uh, yes, we arrived by boat, and we arrived, of course, at... Uh, Calcutta, or? At, uh, uh, was Rangoon? It? No, Bombay. Bombay. And then we went by train mm. across the continent to Calcutta. Mm. And then one flew from Calcutta across the hump, as it was called, then, mm. the Himalayas, in, the, in, a, in, a, in a DC-3. This is this an American plane or a British plane? Oh, uh, well, the Americans were uh, there, uh, weren't they? Yes, the Americans were there. I suppose it, it was it was a Chinese uh, it was the Chinese National Aviation hmm. Corporation or something of that sort. Yes, but of course it was an American airplane. Yes. Hmm. So you flew over, and can you remember actually where did you land? We landed at Kunming. Hmm. In Yunnan. In Yunnan, yes, yes. Do you remember your sensations as you swooped down from the clouds? Well, I remember coming out of the clouds eventually and seeing the people with uh, with blue clothes mm. working in the fields. Mm. I could I could see that. I remember the first thing I saw. And what was the city of Kunming like? A, a large and prosperous modern metropolis, or not? Well, I suppose it was it was Chinese, which is. <laughs> And the Chinese modern metropolis wasn't really, didn't really make sense to me at that time. Mm. So it was fairly small. Yes, I suppose so. I, I can't remember yeah. actual figures, but it was a it mm. was a small town. A, a, a town. Mm. And uh, you know, a town with its boundaries, and it, it had a, a railway line that came up from the south mm. and went off to the east. Did it have cars and things like that? I don't remember that I had any cars at all. And electricity? Yes, I certainly had electricity. Mm. The the uh, the people I stayed with to start with were uh, European. Yes. And he was uh, the post office the man who ran the post office. He called, he was called Stamp Smith. <laughs> oh, I see. It was a nickname. I was going to say I it was rather it was a, fortuitous. I think it was a nickname. Was a nickname Someone called been. Stamp should run a post office. Yes, I think so. Um, so Stamp Smith you stayed with, and what are what other impressions? I mean, did you get an impression of wealth, poverty, um, re religiosity? Any other impressions at that time? I think the main impression was poverty. Really, mm. that everyone was going back to the Middle Ages. Mm. And, and what I imagine the Middle Ages was like. Mm. And and cleanliness or dirt or oh, not much cleanliness around. No. And crowded or. Sparse. Very crowded, of course. I mean, well, I don't know how well known it is, but any Chinese town, there always seem to be thousands of people everywhere, mm. all doing something or other. What, and what was their attitude to you? Did they sort of stare and poke you, or did they? Keep... Oh, well, the, the attitude was was always there. Yes, you, you had to be very careful. I mean, if you stopped and stood somewhere, a, a crowd would gather around you, mm. and. Uh, and well, they were quite a friendly crowd, but they were, they were always there, mm. hundreds of people really. And of course, uh, they were looking at this mad foreigner, mm. which was a pretty unusual situation, I think, in China in the, at that time. Mm. And did you notice much difference between the men and the women? The, the, they were all wearing blue kind of well, clothes. Well, we didn't really see very much of, of the women at all. Mm. They, they took a very back part in the, in the situation, as far as I can remember. Well, they weren't wearing, I mean, they didn't have bound feet or anything at that I time. I don't think of any bound feet at all, no, mm. no. Did you see, that area is famous for its ethnic groups and different peoples, did you notice that? Oh, yes, well, we were conscious of them. There was the Mao mm. and the Lolo mm. I, I knew about, mm. and uh, we, could, we could tell them because of the different clothes they wore. They did wear their tribal they, they, costumes. They were, well, I mean, the women wore skirts, for example. Mm. Mm. Very colourful ones. Yes, yes. Mm. And they came into Kunming. And they came into Kunming to markets and things like that. Yes. Mm. So, how long did you stay in Kunming? 
Oh, well, only just in transit. Mm. I was there for two or three weeks, and then I moved on to a place called Chu Jing, mm. on which was about oh, fifty or sixty kilometres to the east, on still on 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 the extension of the Burma Road. Yes. And why were you sent there? What were you to do? The, well, that was where the um, the headquarters of the friends. Uh, was and the friends were at that time they, they they had given up trying to do any uh, military hospital work. Yes. And uh, they found that what they could do best was was help with the transport system. So that we, we were, the friends were building up this transport system at at this little town of Chujing, hmm. where we had about twenty trucks or so I think, uh, we and which we serviced and worked on them. The Chinese were very, very clever at working on trucks so they could almost do impossible things all the time they were doing hmm. with, with, ha with hammers and screwdrivers and not much else at all. Why couldn't they do anything in the hospital line? Um, were there no patients oh, or um, did they not have any supplies or what? No, we have to, I have to say that wrongly. Well, there was, there was, no, there was no hospital. There was a there was a, a base hospital in Chujing for the military, and that was mainly just chiefly. Well, I remember that is that, that, that whether the corpses they carried out were in in two head to tail or there were packages packages of three. <laughs> it was that sort of hospital. Mm. Were these casualties from the war or just people sick in the countryside? Well, I suspect they were people sick in the countryside. Because really. there was no, at that time, was there fighting in the area you were in? No, no, there was no fighting mm. actually within mm. 20 or 30 miles of where I was. No. Mm. And uh, what, what good was it thought that by uh, mending lorries, what good was that doing? What were these lorries carrying? Oh, well, yes, and that's important, because, of course, they were carrying um, medical supplies. Mm. Uh, medical supplies which were flown in from England mm. and landed at Kunming, uh, and we took them, up, took them up the road. Which way up the road? I mean, down the road or up the road? Well, up the road, to my mind, is means towards Chungking. E uh, yes, east, oh, I see. East, yes. east and north. Yeah, east and north. Why why up there? Because the, the fat battle was going on in, well, soon in Burma and in the south. Well, I would I would think of Burma and the south as, as, as a, a boundary. Yes. Where nothing civilised could pass through. <laughs> it was where the military were. I see. But what was happening in Chongqing then, that they needed medical supplies? Well, I suppose... Was, uh, this, the, was this the beginning of the... The, the medical supplies were going to... I think quite a lot of, uh, sort of little hospitals were run by missionaries, mm. and we were taking certainly were taking medical supplies to missionaries of various kinds, mm. some German ones. Mm. Uh, on, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the place, so somewhere uh, west of uh, of of Chongqing. Mm. Was this part of? It wasn't involved in the war, the growing war between uh, the liberation of what was later Mao's army and so on? No, that was only just beginning to take time. shape hmm. when I was there. Yes. And what time I came back, it was that the Mao had advanced over over most of China. Hmm. When, when did you come back? What? How long were you there? Oh, well, there were about, only about three years, three or four years it must hmm. have been, yes. That's a long time. So by the end, the because he gradually extended after the long march and so on he extended his grip on southwest china didn't he yes well i i'd been to chungking two or three times by truck it took mm. about a month to get drive them really Something oh dear yeah. we're, we're hoping to to drive down there in about a week with xiao xiao in september so i hope the road oh, is I improved see. i think the roads are probably better now i mean in fact i'm sure they are uh, or we could go by train of course mm. Mm. yeah we're driving uh, we're driving i don't know really now mm. Well, at least, from, not personally, but some of yes. Xiao Xiao's family are going to drive us. So. Oh, really? Starting at... Uh, well, Chengdu or Chongqing, yes. yes. Uh, and then uh, down to Yu Kunming. Yes. I've allocated about a week in my mind, so two months would have been... Chengdu to Chongqing. Mm. I'm sorry, Chengdu to... Kunming. Kunming. Mm. 
uh, would have taken that long time in my day. Two months? Uh, well, I think two months would cover it, yes. Mm. It would perhaps it would take a month. It would certainly take a month, yes. Why was it but, so slow? What, what, well, the roads were just... Well, you could, you could only travel in the daytime, mm. and uh, then you tended to spend two or three days at one place occasionally when right. the, the roads were up. Mm. A lot of landslides and... Yes, landslides and things like that. Mm. What time of year was good to travel? Oh, I don't really know. I think early summer, probably. Mm. So, did you actually enjoy the work and, and find it stimulating, or was it a rather well, boring? Well, I, could I, did I enjoy it. I mean, enjoying isn't exactly Quite the right yeah. word, somehow. <laughs> I found it stimulating and exciting. Mm. Mm. I must say, and it was well worth, and I felt it was worth doing. You know, mm. I was doing something which was, you were overcoming difficulties mm. for, 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 for some reason. Mm. I mean, what, what even it was just trying to get a truck through, mm. and you wanted to get a truck through because there were, it was carrying something valuable, mm. and sometimes it was very valuable. Mm. There was one, we had a million, we had a, what was it to be a million dollars worth of material on one truck. Oh, wow. Uh, which was quite a, quite a lot, really. At that time, it was a huge amount. Yes, it was a million dollars, and that was the time when I was attacked by bandits. Were you? So I was a bit scared that they were mm. going to, they were going to get my million dollars worth. So how did you fend them off? Well, that's a ridiculous story. Really, my my wartime story of heroism is that I was driving up to a mountain pass, and uh, the uh, the not good men ran across the skyline firing guns towards me. Mm. And it was a bit scary having guns fired at me because bits were being knocked off the truck. Mm. And of course, eventually they hit, hit the truck and I stopped. And then I thought, well, now what can I do? And the answer was nothing. So I took my wristwatch off and I put it, hid it under the seat <laughs> and waited for the not good men to come. But the next thing that happened was that one of my other people on the truck had a, a large red beard. Hmm. And he took, he poked his head out of the window and said, "What is going on here?" <laughs> and the bandits ran away. <laughs> so that's my bandit what a story, story, my heroic bandit story. <laughs> and we were rescued story. by somebody else in the end who towed hmm. our truck in. Hmm. When you say you changed from bandits to not good men, um, who were they actually? Well, uh, bandits were local people who managed to get hold of guns. Hmm. Strictly speaking, so that's the simple, simplest definition of bandits. Mm, so they were probably desperate themselves. But. Oh, I would think so, poor things, mm. yes, yes. Mm. Did you actually make friends with any Chinese in a sort of, in the English sense of friendship? I mean, that, that's to say that you were very sad to see them go and you discussed oh, yes, all I sorts of things. I think one or two friends who were, they were only people who were working with the unit. Yes. So that they, I don't know whether you would count them as oh yes, as, 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 as but as they, Chinese. But they turned from just being working with the unit to real friends, people you could discuss with and you'd like to spend time with. And well, honestly, really, there weren't very many. No, mm. no. And of course, there were a lot of Chinese that you, that you dealt with. Who mm. all the workers in, the, in my in my depot, which had about mm. fifty people in it, as far as I remember, and. Uh, and uh, I had a rather formal attitude with them. I was mm. the Tianjiang. Mm. And, uh, what does that mean? Boss? Uh, the boss, yes. The head man, I think. Mm. But um, why, why I'm asking is I'm wondering how much of a kind of enclave or oasis of Westernism within this vast uh, surrounding mass of Chinese population you were, whether you were, as in many colonial settings, my parents in Assam at the same time, you know, basically, your friends were the people at the club and Europeans, and there was almost a caste system. You couldn't really make friends with, in that case, Indians, in your case, Chinese. No. Well, I don't think any of the Chinese that I had associated with were people in that in that, in, the, in, the, in the class I could make friends with. Mm. There were. Were there some educated Chinese? Oh yes, we 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 got, we got to know a few educated Chinese, but not very many. Mm. Uh, I, we went to I remember going to a dinner uh, held by Chinese officials in, in in our little town of Chuching. Mm. 
so there were quite there were quite there were quite a lot of educated intelligent Chinese there. Oh, right. Mm. Did you ever go into a Chinese person's house and just have an ordinary meal with them? Well, that's an interesting question because I, when I think of that, the answer is it's quite clearly no. Hmm. Did you ever wear Chinese clothes? No. Um, because I think if, if I go back to Chinese house, mm. well, one or two Chinese houses I went into, perhaps I should have said no so firmly, on the road, mm. because um, occasionally on the road there were accidents and we mm. used to go and help them. Mm. And, and do operations even mm. them sometimes. So I did go into one or two houses. Do you think the fact that you didn't was largely because you would have felt awkward or because they would have felt awkward or a combination of the two? Uh, well, I never, I never thought of, I never thought of that really, and there just wasn't, there wasn't any occasion mm. for doing anything in these other other people's mm. houses. Mm. What about, you mentioned earlier that the women kept very much in the background. Yes. Did you ever get to talk in any depth or get to know any women at all when you were there? No, I think the only women were kind of westernised or half-westernised. Mm. Mm. There were a number who were western women, of course, mm. and there were others who had Chinese names. Mm. And I think had, uh, had come from England or mm. America in the first mm. place. So I never spoke. To, I never spoke to any ordinary Chinese women. Mm. Mm. You were at this time. Well, I spoke, I'm sorry. If I go back for mm. a moment, I spoke to them in that they sometimes shouted at me <laughs> when my when I drove my truck and knocked their buildings down and things like that. Mm, I imagine they would. <laughs> that was the only communications I had with the them. Irritation. Um, did did um, you were? In, I'm not sure whether you were engaged. You were certainly corresponding with your future wife at yes. this time sending her delightful um, photographs, or she sent you one of her milking a cow right. or something. Yes, yes, she sent one of her, and, and I uh, was able to distinguish her from the cow. That's the right, picture. yes, <laughs> and super other compliments. Um, these are rather more personal questions. I mean, some of the images of traditional China before Mao are um, well, one of them is that there was a very serious problem of, of um, opium abuse, yeah. largely fostered by the British, of course, in the opium, yes, yeah. their opium trade. But did you come across any, any signs of that? This is on quite near to Burma. Yes, well, I think one or two of the people on our what they, staff who worked in my garage were, mm. were, were addicts. They were? Yes, yes I'm pretty sure they were, yes. You didn't sort of go into... Uh, what I didn't get invested. I didn't get involved in it mm. at all. But I mean, they, they said, "Oh, so and so, he's he's out." Mm. But there were no opium dens or anything that you saw or visited. <laughs> no, no, I certainly didn't mm. see anything of that sort. No. Mm. Um, did you see much? I mean, you might not have noticed it, but any much violence, popular, you know, local violence, people fights or shoutings or. Uh, no, I think the Chinese were pretty consistent, really. They used to shout a lot and wave mm. their arms around, mm. but they, they didn't actually hit each other very much. Mm. The only violence I got involved in was the uh, was those who had guns. Mm. And this is an even more personal question in a way. I mean, I talked about women. Um, there are obviously in many parts of the world where there are expatriates and so on, problems of prostitution and so on. Did you notice any of this? No, I can't say I was conscious of that mm. in mm. any way at all. Mm. Well, I've asked you lots of questions and I've got one or two more, but it would be nice if Xiao Xiao had a chance just to ask you one or two questions if she would like to. Well, I'm very so. happy to answer any questions <laughs> if, you, if you think they have any interest. So, Xiao Xiao, were, were there any things that I've missed or you would like to ask about? Mm. Or we can do it on another occasion. You can write some down if you like, whatever is yes. Yeah, maybe later. So we'll, we'll come back and ask a few more when Xiao has digested this interview. Yes, yes, but well you've um, got quite a lot of interview, haven't you, now? Well, I'm just going to ask a couple more just to, to round off. Um, you were there till about 44. Uh, I am, uh, honestly, I am not yes, sure Three what years, yeah, yes, three yes. or four years. And then you came back to England yes. and... Um, 
Had it had China changed your life? Uh, well, yes, I think it must have really. What? What? But, it, but it's, uh, you've got to ask in what way, and I kind of mm. find it very hard to to answer that. Mm. Well, has it always given you a sense of how privileged you were to live in England, or um, how varied and different the world was, or anything like this? A sense of perspective. Well, I think it must have done that. Yes, I mean, I, I, mean, I did really understand uh, quite a lot about. They weren't just foreigners, hmm. in inverted commas, anymore. Yes, they, they were, were real people. They were real people, yes. Mm -hmm. and did you want to go back? Uh, yes, in a, in a sort of weird way. I did go back. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was years afterwards. I, 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 uh, but I would like to have gone back to Chu Jing. Mm. I couldn't manage to do that. Mm. And of course it was very difficult to go to China for an mm. Englishman in the 1980s even, yes. I think. And I was one of the first people in our, our department, the, the professors went first and then mm. the ordinary people like me went later mm. on. And I managed to get back, the Royal Society mm. paid for a visit for me and my wife and we went back and I went back to China and uh, visited a whole lot of cities like Peking and uh, Shanghai. In Shanghai, yes, mm. of course, and Tianjin. Tianjin is the place I was thinking mm. of, yes. And but you didn't get back down to Yunnan. I never got back into Yunnan. No, mm. no. Uh, it, it just wasn't convenient or wasn't possible mm. to get into Yunnan. Well, now is the time, as I mentioned, a direct flight from Gatwick to Chengdu. Yes. Is easier than going to Scotland, really. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes. yes, it would be nice to be able to, to land in Chengdu tomorrow. Yes, nothing to stop you now. <laughs> well, I, well, well, I say it would be nice. I'm, I can see there would be some hazards, really. <laughs> yes, there, there probably would. Anyway, um, I'd like to thank you very much indeed for some of these thoughts, and when we think of uh, some further questions, perhaps we can talk again. But. Um, Thank you very much indeed, John. Well, okay, thoughts. well, it's very nice to be able to talk about China because my, I mean, my overall feeling about China is that I wouldn't have missed it for anything, mm. what I did there. It was, mm. What a wonderful experience it was. Mm. Well, that's a very nice thought to end on. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. <laughs>